Good day, everyone. Um, um, real pleasure to be here again this year. And I was uh, quite enthused by this morning's presentations because a lot of the themes are coming together around, I think what Tanya said, a focus not on just power, but on kilowatt hours of power. And so I'm gonna show a brief video uh, and really share our thinking on how we maximize the amount of energy you can generate. That's where we get our tagline, the most power from photovoltaics. It's more than just one piece of technology. So I'm gonna to talk to you about trackers and then automated cleaning. Okay. So the first thing we were trying to do is make it, you able to develop projects where you need them and go up and down slopes. Uh, a way to look at our technology is a bunch of frustrated engineers trying to fix the frustrations and problems they had on previous developments. And so we developed a ballasted tracker system that avoids drilling, avoids geotech risk, lets you build where you want. And when the industry went to scale megawatt projects, they went to the highway department and looked at the guardrail for driven post. We went to the highway department as well and saw slip form extrusion, how you build rail and, you know, curb and gutter. And so it's a very efficient process for concrete uh, and uh, lets you put down up to two kilometers a shift per machine um, and put structure without having to worry about geotech underneath it. So no testing, no drill sets, no heavy equipment needed. Uh, the idea here is to speed construction and get better quality, especially on remote sites where you don't have skilled labor. So the way we reduce labor cost is we try to do as much pre-assembly as possible. Uh, we're partnering with Tata here in India uh, to localize much of the product. Um, and the point here is you measure that in how many man hours you do. Less man hours means better quality. So if you see where we had the concrete acting as a foundation, it's also helping with logistics. Uh, we wanted to get rid of all the laser leveling and precision measurements needed to build a tracker. So you see they're using the concrete track also as a way to actually uh, bring parts and move parts around the site. So imagine you're in a hot desert. You can build things at the end of the rail and move them in place. This also lets you do three shifts, so you don't have to light the entire site. When you do construction, you can construct at the end of a rail and then pull your parts into place. Again, the idea is the most efficient use of labor you can in what are often very harsh environments, hot temperature, deserts uh, with uh, limited labor. So you see here, they're using no power tools, they're using just manual tools. We've tried to avoid as many torque uh, measurements and connections as possible. Uh, and uh, you'll see that this is also a system where you can use some of the newer technologies like Jinko demonstrated, uh, which are you know, bypass diodes, bifacial, dual glass, without needing extra structure. Uh, this system was designed for the desert and for bifacial. So you see the workers are now moving this, uh, uh, the table in place. And because we've separated the drivetrain, it's not a torque tube, it's more of a drive tube, we can change slope 5% every six dual glass modules uh, up to 15%. And we limit it to 15% because of site safety. If you have a flat site, you can just drop a pin into the drivetrain. Um, if you have a sloping site, you use a flexible coupling. Think about it like a universal joint on your car, just simpler. And instead of thousands of revolutions per minute, it's 365 revolutions per year. So it's a, it's a, you know, a simpler device. And again, the point here is to make it simple so you don't need skilled labor. Uh, one of the problems we had in Southern California, Mexico, and parts of the Mideast was the labor changes on the site every day. So we wanted to keep assembly processes very simple. So we also don't like subsurface guesswork. So we use a two-part thermosetting epoxy like you would use for earthquake remediation or for um, you know, uh, bridge bolts. And that way we know we have enough force to maintain the tracker in place and we're not worried about subsurface friction uh, or any quality we can't see. We also don't have subsurface corrosion because of that. So the goal again is no geotech surprises, use uneven terrain, not farmland, use concrete, it's a good local material, avoid any extra cost for the best modules and build long rows. Um, and the way we do that is a few ways. Uh, one, you're gonna see, uh, we, do, we can use regular modules, but as you've seen from many of the module people in presenting, uh, you know, the cost of dual glass has come down, and it is a better product for deserts. Uh, it has less, uh, you know, there's no hydrolytical stability attack on the back sheet. The product lasts longer, has better degradation. 
And the other point we were trying to do was deal with issues we'd found with previous tracker designs. This is the fifth tracker our team had designed. This is a, another uh, standard tracker design. And we saw issues as we got into large desert arrays with galloping behavior. The natural um, frequency of a long torque tube can be about 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 hertz. And the issue is, on an open site, wind can come from many angles, it can come at many speeds, and you can match that resonant frequency and build up a, um, you know, a, a, a motion. And this is an example of a bridge, and if you look at it in cross-section, it looks like a torque tube tracker because the effects are very similar. You have vortex shedding happening and inducing the vibration, and it's not at high speed. That's at 10 meters per second. So we wanted to get a system that was designed so it could not transmit vibration. It's not a theoretical issue. Here's an example from the U.S. of a relatively low wind speed driving a tracker. It has a um, damper on it, but the damper is not working at the end there. And so we said, let's design out of it with better mechanical engineering. And we do that by using a couple of gears. One gear you'll see in our system increases the stiffness. Um, and we also get rid of uh, the vibration because it damps. So you see that gear makes uh, the system much stiffer. Um, and as you'll see here, our engineer is shaking the system. Um, and it doesn't transmit up the row. So if you do that to a standard torque tube design, it will, the vibration will move up the entire row. You see it gets isolated to a single table. So that's a part of having a geared system and having it separate from the torque tube. The other thing we did is we said it's wasteful to have a bunch of metal holding a torque tube at high wind. So if we could convert a tracker into fixed tilt at high wind, that's a more efficient use of metal. So we stole the idea from a watch. It's a Geneva gear, which disengages your gear on a watch. And so what you're seeing, and you can see it outside on the sample we have, is basically it turns into a fixed tilt. So you basically go from torsional loads, driving on a drive tube, to radial loads down an A-frame, which is a much more efficient use of metal and materials. And because of that, we use about 30 tons of metric tons of steel per megawatt peak versus you know, 50, 60, 70 for other designs. Um, and then the final piece of this, of getting the most energy, is about proactive maintenance. This is a fixed tilt system, uh, but we'll also show you a tracker. It can do dry or wet. If you have inorganic or organic carbon, you need wet cleaning to get that off. Uh, you need both. Uh, and you just do a DOE around which is most efficient for your site. This is a fully, you don't have to bring any diesel to site. It's fully powered, lithium ion phosphate batteries. Um, and because we have a concrete rail, remember we used it for a foundation. We used it for logistics aid, and now the robot rides on it so it doesn't damage the cells in the panels. You do not want to put mass and keep massaging PV cells. You'll put micro cracks in them. So it's an efficient way to clean. You can also do visual inspection. And because we can carry heavy loads, it lets us do more than cleaning. Um, there's the tracker configuration. It does not go that fast. That's a <laughs> video speed up. But you can see we're looking, we can see a barcode. I can see the wire and cable. I'm spraying a coating on the junction box. Here we're carrying equipment to do inspection of the cells. Here's the next generation that does four megawatts per robot. And uh, you know, we just see it as a platform that can do more than only clean. Um, now, we do like the trend towards dual glass and bifacial. Um, our math is, not, is a little more conservative. We think a single axis tractor will give you about 20%. Um, and because we have an offset drive tube, it doesn't block the light to the back of the panel. And if you have nice uh, modules like Jinko with bypass diodes, uh, you can have flexible configurations for your bifacial. And then we think that maintaining the albedo is another way to ensure you get that boost. So we're using organic uh, agricultural lime here to actually increase the albedo of the site. Again, because the robot can carry fluids. So really, those are our ideas, is build simpler and um, you know, use automation to get more energy out of your site. And that's how our thinking, I think, matches with a lot of the dialogue I heard this morning uh, from a number of people. Thank you.